Okay, so uh, we are going to talk for the first time about uh, our uh, recent project based on uh, blockchain technology uh, called uh, VOV, Value of Values. And uh, we call um, this project a transactional art uh, project. So uh, we have to start to, uh, with some recap, some uh, reminders, but uh, this has been evoked by other people before. Uh, yeah, l language has to be uh, considered as the first way to uh, put a name on things and to convert the things into signs. And this is uh, all about this. That means how do we talk, how do we refer uh, to objects, ideas, and actions. And the history, in the history of the humankind, uh, we did it in different ways. So that's funny to see that coining, putting a word on something, is actually the fact just to give a name to things, but it's also something close to coin. And actually, words we know are coming from that. So then, uh, we have been considering the idea that the world could be divided into atoms, and the atoms being undividable, uh, impossible to divide. So that's another way to consider the world. There is a world, there is a world that we can name and uh, put words on, and the world that we can divide into particles. And then after the particles, after the atoms, we have been uh, dividing the world into binary digit, considering that everything should be convertible into uh, something supposed to be digital. Digital meaning that both our natural and artificial brains can compute it. And that's uh, something important because suddenly we totally relate the world to something we can treat. So if we see the, this series of uh, ways to divide the world, we have the calculus, the original stone that became the way to calculate but also consider as money as well. Words, money, atoms, and bits, all are ways to discretize the world, to consider that it could be made of elements that are separated, but it can also allow us to do something with that. So there, uh, yeah, we can say that the, this uh, discretization of the world is a way to neutralize the ontological difference of the being. Everything should be at the same level. Everything should be made of comparable elements. And these elements can be treated in different ways. And this has a very simple objective. This is to control the world. To be able to talk about the world, to be able to share about the world, to be able to manipulate the world, we need to do this operation of discretization. So we call this process sublimation. It's a reference to chemistry, uh, but it's important to understand that we are in a process of converting the world into data. This is not a, a new idea. It's something we have to understand to understand the following. So uh, now we are supposed to talk in a way about crypto art. And there it seems to be so many projects talking about art using <coughs> blockchain. And the question is, are we talking about new forms of art? This is not totally sure. We are more often talking about new marketing strategies for art. We are talking about market. We are not changing art. We are changing the way to sell it, to sell it. And so, Actually, we had the feeling that it could be possible to focus more on the ontological significance of the art project. So this is how we started the Brain Factory project. So my voice will slightly change now. Thank you. Just a little change. <laughs> so in order for the VOV project to take place, um, we defined a positioning system that allows the creation of such VODs, which we will talk about later. But this can only be done in one place at one time. So it's kind of different already to the 
point of like usual cryptocurrency and such. Uh, it is the brain factory where something is created. And it is created by yourself, in the fact through using your brain. So in that we developed a method to calibrate the reading of your brain via a BCI device. So because all of us have a very different type of brain, the most important part is to find a way of signal processing, figuring out what is yes, what is no, what is like, what is not like. And then through sequentially applying forces onto the particle system, allowing you to shape such an abstract geometry with your thought, with your reactions towards it, contemplating abstract, human abstract, such as love, freedom, um, imprisonment, um, even, even downright to hate. So neither positive nor negative abstracts. Uh, within this sequence, you are sitting in this wonderful chair, um, looking at what is happening and contemplating these words, these abstracts. Uh, and again, consciously or subconsciously, you are reacting to what you're seeing, and those reactions are translated into forces. Ah, thank you. And these are then put forward into forces. So what you've seen maybe yesterday already is, now you see the behind engine, is a series of operations based on the particle applying those forces and reacting towards the change of you percepting these forms. This is space, so the contemplation about space, and as you can see, we go into a series of movements like core shifting, horizontality, gravity, um, each of which is then with the values that you see next to it applied to what is your brain reacting towards it. So that's shaping it, giving it a kind of formal genetic right behind the scenes. Um, in this case, though, it gets quite extreme because the program that started with that had a, a quite heavy reaction to the idea of space. So what you see in the end is something that, I think in a couple of seconds, basically a complete explosion of the kind of like geometry into what we thought was quite amazing that uh, actually what the word space even reacted to something like creating a complete dispersion in that cube, in that imaginary cube. So in any case, once this, is, um, once this, this process of about six minutes has finished, an artifact is created. Um, that ar artifact, or this data, uh, belongs to the person having it created. Uh, not yet, in, uh, in the microwave, but it not, at the moment it is, uh, it is saved in a database, and that database is evolving. So we're adding a fact here that is kind of a morphogenetics towards the form. Each time one other person is uh, contemplating the same word, let's say freedom, the last version of freedom becomes the core cell, or let's say the seed of the new freedom, to be explored, to be evaluated, to be looked at, and to be evolved, which kind of in the end means after a number of people using the system, you're getting actually into what kind of abstract form we as humanity could give to such a word as freedom or um, love. In the case of freedom, it's, it's obviously, as uh, Maurice is saying quite often, it's not the shape of the Statue of Liberty holding a torch, but it becomes something else when it's thinking about how such reification um, becomes a conversion of abstract into an object. The next step then is more a technical. Can we give this shape um, not only in existence as in legal terms, for instance, applying it into a blockchain, but as well a existing in its physicality. So uh, through using particle systems and then skinning them and then kind of reiterating them and reifying them, obviously these become as well physical objects that are 3D printable or storable or etchable or in the sense of the VOB as well being reified um, into maybe larger elements. So at the moment, the stage for the Brain Factory, which is the precursor for the blockchain crypto art project VOV, is actually to, as a kind of let's say, a testing series, to be able to test every single part of that process uh, and make it available. Right. So at that point, then I guess we'll have to see what artificiality nine means uh, if one sees it in a larger uh, ecosystem of thoughts and in a larger ecosystem of comparing them, which so far in the Brain Factory project, you only would be based one upon the other that was in the same series. So let's say 
Freedom 8 was based on Freedom 7, but developed further by an unknown person. And that we were very unsatisfied with. So what about an ecology of such human abstracts? I guess I can pass back to you. Thank you, Tobias. So as you can see, uh, one of the questions is, of course, the reified object could become uh, an object for the market. But we can also consider that the, the shape itself, before reification, has already a certain value. And this is exactly how we started with a, with a new project, which is an extension of the Brain Factory uh, project, so let's say directly inspired by. And this is VOV, value of values. It's a, a cryptocurrency made of shaped human values. So, we'll explain later what uh, we uh, call transactional art, but I think it will be self-explanatory. And uh, so, as, you can, as we can say that painting is a medium and the brush is a tool, we could say that a transaction itself is the medium. And this is how we can reconsider, uh, reconsider the way to make art with blockchain here. So blockchain is a tool that makes transaction possible, the, the possible conversion of transaction into a medium. So, uh, yeah, we are not in, with the brain factory, we are working on attractions, any kind of human attractions, uh, because we thought it's something very specific to the humankind, and we have no idea how animals can have attractions, and they never found a way to express themselves on the topic. So we considered that it would be interesting to focus on human values, because we are talking about convertibility of things, and the value of the values may be at stake. So we try to give, thanks to the Brain Factory apparatus, uh, to uh, narrow design the values. And so, Doing so, we, uh, we can see that the process is very simple. What we produce with, uh, on the chair you have seen with an EEG headset, with a BCI technology, brain-computer interaction technology, uh, we actually give, uh, create a shape that be can become a token. And you have seen uh, with the database that we have a series of tokens and we produce a series of tokens. So the token is immediately added to the blockchain, and the, the owner of the token is the one who actually gave shape at the last minute. I mean the last one, uh, because the process is a kind of generative process, which is also an evo uh, evolutionist process. That means we inherit from the previous brain workers that gave already a shape, and this shape evolved in our mental ecosystem, which is our brain. And so the question is how a shape can survive in our brain if it is supposed to express uh, uh, human attractions, and here a human value. So then the uh, owner of the token can decide to collect it or to trade it on the mobile or the internet platform. And so what happens? I'm the visitor of the show, I'm a spectator, usually, and suddenly I have to give shape to uh, something, an abstract concept. So I'm becoming an artist. At the same time, I'm becoming a producer, you will see why a bit later, and an art dealer, as I can sell my art, and maybe exchange this artwork with other artwork and sell them. And I become a collector an art collector. So the visitor of the show becomes artist, art dealer, art collector. So how can it be transactional art? It's pretty easy. As you don't choose uh, the attraction that you are actually shaping, maybe you're not so interested by having, I don't know, intelligence as a value. And so you would like to trade it for something else, maybe to batter it or to sell it. 
And this is how the market uh, takes a role here. Because people can, for example, trade piece 400 for plus love 2 for money 88. Maybe they would like to batter it that way. And it's interesting to see that peace and love makes money. And of course, this means that the value of peace and love is supposed to be lower than the value of money. And the, ad the addition of both give us a relative value of each thing. So as soon as we have thousands of transactions, we can say something relevant about the value of the values. And so, as people can also buy them, we know how much they are ready to invest in values, what they consider as a priority in terms of values. Some people told us, why don't you ask people just to say, oh, what is, what is your best value? What is the most important value for you? I say, of course, they will say, I don't know, peace, generosity, whatever. But as soon as you ask them, how much are you ready to pay for this value, they behave in a different way. So that's uh, interesting to see how the contamination by the convertibility is actually building another dimension of the values. So the, the platform allows a permanent monitoring, real-time monitoring of the different values. And so VOV not only gives a shape to value, but gives the value of the values. And the transaction is the way to know the objective value of, of a given value. So as you can see here, for example, you have four, I don't know, this is money. You can have the minimum value, the maximum value, and the median value. And the evolution of the median value tell you, tells you what is the global situation of the values at the planet scale. So if we want to explain what POV is, we can say that it is a real currency because we can deal with it, a critical metaphor of the art production narrative, and also a dynamic reflection on its founding ontology. So beyond transaction, we there is a process of distributed reification of art. What people can do with the model they have acquired, the token, if they don't want to sell it, if they don't want to trade it, to barter it. In this case, they can use it as they want because they become the property, intellectual property owner of the model. So they can decide to create thousands of key, of key rings and give them to everybody. Or they can decide to make artworks. They have the shape, they can give, they can reify this shape and make something they consider as an artwork. And they can interpret it as many times as they want. There is no limitation. So the show we plan, the different shows we plan, will include at the same time the minting station made of the brain factory uh, machine and also some of the reifications made by us or other artists. And one of them uh, will, be, uh, will be this uh, printer called the big reificator that will convert the attractions into concrete. So uh, real concrete, I mean, you make buildings with it. So from abstract to concrete, the process may be interesting and you wonder if uh, this is a, if art is about giving shape to things, giving, sh giving shape to ideas. Here it's ideas with a shape, but at the end of the process, it may rain on the result and becomes sand again. So we can say that POV is a global art project 
belonging to what we call merging of fiction and reality.